Hey, Rafael. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Yeah, thank you so much, Sajad, for having me. So uh, you're an engineer at Salesforce, a really nice company to work at. And I just have like a few questions for you to kind of spread the knowledge, spread the love to my YouTube family about your experiences. So I guess I'll just start out with how about you just like introduce yourself a little bit, your background a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So I received my bachelor's degree in computer science from Georgia State University in 2016. And then I received my master's degree in computer science from Georgia Tech in 2018. I specialized in computing systems with my master's degree, and I have five years of work experience up to this point. And I had an internship with General Motors when I finished my junior year of undergrad, and then I received a full-time offer from them, which I would start after I graduated. I worked at General Motors for a year as a .NET developer, then I would go to Home Depot after that. I've worked at Home Depot as a software engineer. Later on, as I was thinking about where I wanted to go in my career, I realized that I wanted to work at a more tech driven company, like some of the FANG companies as well as Salesforce. And I really liked the culture at Salesforce and what they had offered me. So I took their offer and I've been at Salesforce for about a year now. I guess you kind of just led me to my next question. Could you talk a little about your experiences at Salesforce? What like a typical day is like? Any highlights? What are like the benefits, perks and all that? At Salesforce, we follow the agile methodology. We adapt to any changes that may occur in the software development process. So we have a meeting called a sprint planning meeting where we plan out the tasks that the team would work on. And a sprint is a two week cycle in which we would get those tasks done. And if some of the tasks don't get completed within those two weeks, they get pushed to the next sprint. As a team, we would go over the level of effort that it would take to complete each task within the given sprint and then unanimously vote on that level of effort through a point system. So if it's a one, then it means that it can be completed in less than a day. But if it's a five, then it means that that the task has a difficult level of effort that may require more than one engineer to work on it. Each team member gets to choose what they would like to work on and then try to complete those tasks within the sprint. Another great thing I like about engineering at Salesforce is that each software engineer is also a quality engineer, meaning that each member of the team assigns themselves as a tester for another team member's task. Once an engineer pushes up his or her code changes to GitHub, we enter a code review phase where we would go over the code changes and if everything looks looks good, but that feature change or bug fix goes through the testing phase. And once that's done, then the change gets shipped out to production. I also have a Medium article that explains the agile development process, and you can pretty much check out the link in the description if you're interested. I usually start my work at around 9 a.m. and then end at 5, so it's pretty much the classic 9 to 5. But what I love about my team at Salesforce is that each person can choose which hours they want to work in the day. So there are some people who start their day at 7.30 and then end at 3.30, while some others also start at 10 a.m. and end at around 6. So I really love the flexibility of the working hours. Well, so solid day at work you have there. Um, how about you talk a little bit about the perks and benefits of working at Salesforce? Comes to the perks of the company, I can tell you that before COVID, I would always eat breakfast from work since there were so many cereal options and they have so many snacks as well. And there was also a big refrigerator with all this Gatorade, water and sodas that you can think of. And every week, there was always some kind of tech talk or event that was happening. Food would be catered from a restaurant. It's really nice to get this free lunch every now and then. But since we're working remote, we get to expense lunch every now and then from any restaurant, which is nice. And I also love the emphasis on mental health and well-being. And in every Salesforce office worldwide, there are meditation rooms where you can pretty much sit back, relax, and de-stress after a long day. Now that we're working remotely, we get at least one or two Fridays off, and these are called mental wellness days. It's really nice that Salesforce cares about its employees well-being and speaking of time off we do get unlimited paid time off and we get six percent matching for 401k which is awesome you not only get merit raises every year but if you're a mid-level software engineer or below you get a 10 percent bonus on your salary and if you're actually a senior software engineer you get a 15 percent bonus and i heard that this number increases as you climb the ladder so the health the dental and vision plans are also top notch and employees also get a 100 dollars stipend every month to spend on anything that is well-being related such as gym fees meditation classes and so on we also get a $500 stipend to spend on any items that we want for our home office which was great and we got a lot of free swag whether it be Patagonia jackets or hoodies or shirts and even pajamas which I didn't even expect so if you ever go to Salesforce 
just be prepared to have some extra space in your closet because you're gonna have all this Salesforce swag that's gonna take up a lot of space. So <laughs> just be prepared. Also get a bunch of discounts for various items. I can give you one example. We actually get 30% off Adidas merchandise. A lot of my audience members are college students seeking internships. So if you could talk a little about the intern experience if you've interacted with any interns and all that so when i was four months into the job my manager told me that i would be a mentor for one of our incoming interns and this intern was from georgia tech and just like yourself she pretty much had to own a big project that she would work on for 10 to 12 weeks this project would kind of be overlooked by a senior software engineer that would also help guide her uh, before covid the interns would get to do a lot of activities together after like covid it's been happening the internships were all virtual so it was a lot more different this year we let the interns know that there is no such thing as a dumb question they can ask any question that they want they can always ask us for help if they need it they don't need to feel scared they don't need to feel like they'll be judged that's what i really like is like the openness they know that interns are just starting out in their careers and they're still in school so they're definitely learning i guess uh the next logical question i have so there's this amazing experience that you've had as well as for the intern experience could you talk about getting into salesforce a little bit what is the best way to apply there's like career fairs obviously referrals how would you go about applying to salesforce so i can just talk about my experience and what it was like when i was applying to salesforce so I applied to Salesforce through its website and I knew someone who worked there. So I added that person's name in the referral section. If you encounter the Salesforce booth at a career fair, that it's a really golden opportunity for the Salesforce reps to see you in person and take your resume. And then you pretty much be one step ahead from everyone else. Because one, they've seen you in person, you can drop off your resume. And referrals are also great if you know someone who works at the company, so that's also an added bonus. For me, I heard back from the recruiter at Salesforce six hours after I had applied. I was a prospective candidate, so I was excited and anxious at the same time about what was in store for me. And I can go into more detail what that interview process was like. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, the interview process, the interview structure a little bit, how many were there, technical, behavioral, a little bit about that. Uh, I could tell you how I first prepared for the interview. Every day I would just come home from my previous job and study for hours and go over my old notes from school, as well as practicing problems and cracking the coding interview, as well as working on some easy to medium lead code problems. I would also practice writing code by hand since I knew that there would be a white board portion where I would have to explain my code to the interviewers. I had my first interview with the recruiter, then with the hiring manager, which was mainly behavioral, and it was just about getting to know me and my interests. After that interview was over, I had a hacker rank challenge that I had to complete, and it was a long programming problem. And once I submitted my work, all my test cases passed, and I proceeded to the next step, pretty much was on site. I got to meet most of the team and got interviewed by them, and then was asked questions on system design, as well as a whiteboarding problem, and I made sure to explain why I was using a particular data structure or algorithm. That way they knew that I was trying to optimize my solution. Once that was over, I found out a week later <laughs> that I got the job. One really important data structure I would say is a hash map or a dictionary if you use Python. Interviewers really love hash maps. So when it comes to algorithms, there isn't any specific algorithm that I can think of, but you always want to think about how scalable your code will be based on the runtime. You don't want to have a runtime that is O of N factor factorial because that would just take too many iterations to run if you have a large set of inputs. I would just say to keep practicing different problems, whether they're in a textbook or in any other book like Cracking the Coding Interview or online problems that are on hacker rank and the uh, lead code. So I guess winding down a little bit, do you have any factors in your process that really helped you stand out? I mean, I guess what I'm really targeting more, do you have any tips to help anyone else out who may be interested in working at Salesforce? So I can say that what helped me stand out was that I did my research on who my interviewers would be. Before my interviews, I would look up my interviewers' profiles on LinkedIn just to get a feel of what experience they have. And I found out that one of my interviewers worked at a previous company that I was at. And I also found out that another interviewer was actually one of my friend's old college roommates. So I brought those up and that really impressed them because they thought, wow, this guy actually looked into us and saw like what we were all about and like knew about our experience and what we worked on so I was able to ask questions that were relevant 
to their experience as well, right? So that impressed them. A lot of CS students or aspiring developers think too much about the technical side of things, but it's always good to think about the behavioral questions, such as how you dealt with a difficult coworker or what would you do if you were stuck on a problem? And they also want to see how personable you are. And if you're someone who can really be a great fit for the team and the culture at Salesforce, I definitely recommend doing research on the company and the values that it has, because if you bring that up, then they'll definitely know that you really want to be at Salesforce and that you have a drive to do great things there. So I would definitely recommend do your research on the company, its values, and the people who would interview you. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. Knowing your interviewers and being able to connect with them on a personal level that's very important because a lot of people they just say okay I'm just gonna do lead code lead code lead code and they don't really worry about like the behavioral or like personal part of things but your advice very valuable right there of course I mean I always say this to anyone who is still in school that don't just think about lead coding thousands of problems, right? Because even though you may be good on the technical side, you have to know how to answer things from a behavioral point of view. And I know that a lot of times we get anxious or we get stressed about what problems we're going to be asked or what data structure or algorithm we're going to have to use that sometimes we just kind of need to think about, okay, here's the technical side of things, but I should also think about what are some scenarios that I can think of that they could ask me, you know, working there, like how would I deal with a difficult coworker? How do I explain something technical to a non-technical person? So things like that really matter matter too. Those soft skills are very valuable as well. Well, thank you so much for joining us here. I think all the responses you gave were very valuable for anyone who's seeking like any engineering position at Salesforce, whether that's an internship or full time. Well, yeah, thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thank you so much for having me.